In this video, I'm going to show you scrolling with cases. A case means that it's conditional. Um, if this particular value is this, then do this. Otherwise, do something else. So up here, you can see I've got some text, window.scrolly value. That is so that we can find what the scroll Y value is at any stage. So let's go and have a look at this. I'm going to create a new interaction. It's going to be on the page itself. So I click on the blank area of the page, click new interaction, and we're going to choose on window scroll. We want to set the text to a particular value. Our target is window dot scroll Y value. And the value we want to give it is going to be a variable. You can find variables through this little button here. We've got the value here. This is a set value, um, but we want a variable. We click on the FX. That gives us functions or variables. So let's delete the current value. And up here, you can see we've got a link, insert variable or function. Click on that. And you can see that we've got one of our variables. If you, you'll have it closed up first, window, open it up, and you've got window.scroll y in two sets of square brackets. So I want to click OK on that and then OK. So now this should, when the window scrolling, set this text box to whatever value window scroll y is. Let's preview that to see. There we go. So you can see the numbers changing. Um, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can show you what these scroll Y values are. When we're at the very top of the page and can't scroll up any further, the value is zero. So it's really telling us the Y value of the top of the page. As I scroll down, you can see that that scroll Y value gets greater. Um, and till we get the bottom of the page, which is, um, you know, at the moment four, four, nine. I'm going to add some more boxes to it before I upload the thing so it will be greater when you do it. Okay, so zero is the top. So you decide at what point you want your interactions to happen. So it might be around 100. We want it to start fading or we could make it even a bit bigger. Let's make it, uh, let's say 110, 110, okay. So uh, when it hits 110 or greater, I want it to fade out. When it gets to less than 110, I want it to fade back in. So how do we do this? Well, we've got our on window scroll here. So we need to enable a case. And this case we're going to have, we're gonna call it um, hide image. We need to add some logic. The logic is when the value of the scroll Y, so again we hit the FX to go and find that, insert variable or function and go and find window.scroll Y. And here we have our conditional logic. So if the value is um, greater than or equals, and what was the number we wanted? 110 pixels. Click OK. Um, so this is our conditional logic on the hide image. Um, so the action that we want is to show or hide. And it will be the target is the scroll image. And we want to hide it and the animation is to fade it out. Okay, let's preview this and check that I've got the settings right. Now an interesting thing has happened now. You see that this text up here, um, it doesn't go back to zero anymore and that's because it is now part of this conditional logic. It is basically saying if the window scroll Y is greater than or equals 110, then we want to set the text and show and hide. So it's a, just a bit of a quirk there to be aware of. But if we preview this, that is the effect that I want. The only problem is I want it to fade back in again. To fade back in, we have to set another case. And this one will be to show the image. Add the logic. And again, it's based on a value. 
and the variable we want is again window scroll y click OK so value window scroll y and beforehand we had it greater than or equal so now we want it to be the opposite of that it's less than the value um, and we need to set that value exactly and it was 110 so let's set that Okay, so the conditional logic here is if the window scroll Y is greater than or equals 110, hide the image. Else, if the window scroll Y is less than 110, we want it to show the image. So I add an action and you do this with that little pink button below it. And we choose show or hide. And we choose the widget we're targeting, the scroll image. And this time around we're showing it and again we're fading it we're going to fade it in half a second okay so let's see I'm just going to save this command s let's preview this and as I scroll down we can see it fades out as I scroll up it fades back in again if you wanted this text to change again we would need to set the text again so I could actually select that particular action right click copy and then down here oops I should be able to if it allows me whoops hang on cancel out of that oh whoops goodness me I'll paste it in here okay so now we've got the text being set in both of these sets of conditional logic if we preview as I scroll down it fades out as I scroll up and we've still got that um, scroll Y value showing up here so that's how you can use a case and this can be used in all different ways you can use it to control the speed at which something moves um, so that you can create parallax scrolling um, you know all sorts of different things you can do with that uh, but this is just a basic show or hide based on where the user is um, with their scroll Y value up the top there Thank you.